Hi there. Today we're going to take this energy, uh, this Emporia energy view uh, energy monitor and we're going to place it in this electrical panel. Make sure you're using a licensed professional and you're doing everything according to your local code. So let's get started. Here's the completed install. There's just no way to get those wires to be any shorter than that. So you have this bundle of wires right here and that's just the way they are. Plus my panels recessed in the wall and typically you would take that Wi-Fi antenna and you would put that Wi-Fi antenna outside the bottom or side of your box through one of the, the little uh, cutouts here. But because my panels recessed, I don't have any of that. I could potentially put it out the front of the panel if I really needed to, but I'm so close to my AP, I don't think there's gonna be an issue with that. But here is the completed install. I've wire tied things or wire wrapped things as best I can. One thing to note too, is that when you install these, make sure that you have, there's little uh, labels on here, make sure you have these pointed the right direction. Uh, all of these should be pointed away from the breaker and these should be pointed towards the breaker as you can see there. All right, so the next step is to go ahead and get it installed into the app, get all the stuff configured, and then we'll jump into Home Assistant and see what kind of sensors we have for the energy portal in Home Assistant. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and install the integration that we need to have Emporia talk to Home Assistant. And that's a GitHub link. Uh, this uh, individual here, Magico13, has created an integration, and we're gonna use the integration today. And I'll link this down below. And what you do is you uh, copy the integration or the repo. So we're going to do that, copy that. We're going to go over to HACS. Now this is an HACS, uh, um, an HACS integration, not a direct Home Assistant core integration. So click on HACS. And in the integrations section here, you're going to click on the three dots up here on the right. And we're going to do a custom repository. And under the custom, custom repository, we're gonna paste in that link that, that I just copied from the other uh, GitHub site. And the category, category is gonna be integrations. And so what we'll do there is then add it. And it'll show up now as a new uh, integration or a new repository to pull the integration from. You can see it here. Once we do that, we can close this down and we can search for Emporia. And you can see we have the Emporia view here. And we're gonna install this integration. And once you install this, uh, you're going to have to restart Home Assistant. With HACS, most of the integrations you install require a restart. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. Before you restart, you always want to make sure that you check your configuration and make sure nothing is wrong with it. So we're going to check the configuration now. And then we'll go ahead and do a, a full restart of Home Assistant. And that'll take a minute or two, depending on your hardware. And then we'll come back right after that. All right, now that Home Assistant has restarted, we should have an HACS integration, but we also need to go into Home Assistant and we tie our HACS integrations into Home Assistant using the core integrations. Click on integrations and click on add Inter integrations. And if you've got the HACS thing installed correctly, you should see the view, uh, Emporia view listed here as a new integration. So we're gonna click on that. 
And it's going to ask you for your email and your password that you set up on your Emporia account when you first install the device. So I'm going to input that now. And when you see success here, you're going to have an option to select all the areas in which all these devices show up. So if you have the Emporia view with all of the extra 50 amp sensors, the little clamps, you're going to have all of these devices show up here as you had uh, set up in the app. In addition, if you have the two main clamps, you'll have those as well up here. So there you have it. Uh, click on finish here and you can go over here and look at your 18 devices and your 54 entities and um, they're ready to use right away. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go over to my energy and I want to set up energy, uh, set these devices in my energy portal on Home Assistant. And for that, we go back over to configuration and we're here now looking at energy. We have consumption here, which is my main uh, clamp that I have outside on my 220 circuit coming into the house. I can add an additional consumption here, which would then be my new uh, device that I have on Emporia. And that's gonna be this uh, clamp one, two, three, which is the, the main clamps. And if you look at the, the Emporia device, you'll see uh, when you put those main clamps in, you'll put them in numbered slots one, two, and three, and all of the rest of the uh, devices go along the sides as numbers. So I'm gonna choose that. And right now I'm just not gonna track the costs on it. Actually, I can't select it here. This has been an issue I've had with Chrome uh, for a while now. I'm not able to actually put in here. I can't select it, so I'm just gonna type it in and save it now. And here's individual devices that I already have set up in my energy portal. I'm gonna add all the new clamps that I just added in here. We'll go through one at a time and we'll add the clamps. And it automatically selects things that are applicable to the energy monitor, so kilowatt hour type devices. And I'm just gonna go through all of these and I'm gonna select all of these one at a time. Now I'm gonna do this in, let me switch over to Firefox because for some reason I can't click and it'll take me too, too long to type each one of those in. So we're over here in Firefox now where I can actually click on this stuff. Uh, you can see here I have my main energy meter I just talked about and I have the uh, the new one I just added from the Emporia device. So now I'm gonna add all the rest of my devices here one at a time. And I'm gonna go for the one day. This 1D means one day. I'm gonna go for the one day resolution or, or entity so that it can reset every day like it should when that's, uh, that's how energy uh, portal works in Home Assistant. You want it to reset on a daily basis. And I'm just going to go through and add all the devices. Okay, I have all the devices added now. And if you're curious what these numbers are after each one of these devices, that's the port on the side of the Emporia where this is plugged into. So in addition to giving the names when you configure the device, it automatically applies the port number on the entity so you know which, uh, which plug or which hole it's plugged into on the side there. So I should have 16 devices here. And the reason I'm putting these in first thing is because I need it to be able to, um, I need to be able to start working. And if you look at the energy portal, he says anything that you add in here uh, can take up to two hours for it to start arriving in your energy dashboard. So I wanna get a head start, get all the devices added that I'm gonna track in my energy portal, and then uh, come back in a couple hours and see that they're there. If we look at energy portal now, we'll see that we have both of these things here, but they don't have any data yet. So we're gonna give that some time to populate, and then we'll come back and look at it and see what it looks like in a couple hours. While we wait for the energy portal to populate, let's talk about the application for just a moment. Now I didn't go through and I didn't show you all of the application. I didn't show you everything that, um, or the whole install process. When you first open the box and start installing the Emporia, there's a step-by-step -step, uh, setup process that the app will, show, that will take you through. It's very detailed, it works very well. One of the things you do have to remember though, is make sure that you have uh, the clamps pointed the right direction. I actually had to reverse a few of my clamps because when I first set it up, I didn't read the directions correctly and I had some of the clamps pointing away from the, uh, or towards the breakers when they should be pointing away and vice versa. So make sure you follow the directions. 
but follow everything you do when you install it. Um, if you're going to do this, make sure you use a licensed professional. If you're uncomfortable with electricity, you are sticking your hands in a live electrical box uh, or you're in an electrical box that should be shut down. Uh, but make sure you're doing this safely and you're using a licensed professional if needed. Um, all Those are all my disclaimers. Make sure you're doing it safely, however you happen to do that. All right, so let's take a look at the actual device right here. I'm going to take you through actually how the energy use is set up in my device. When you when you configure this and you go through the steps, you'll be able to name all of your devices. And you can see here that I have all of my devices named for the different breakers. So as you go through and add these in there, you'll have to understand how your breakers are set up and name them appropriately. But now what you have is you have your total usage. It's a second by second resolution. So you can do seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, and years. Now I don't have anything more than a day yet because I just installed it. But you can see on a second by second basis what is using the most energy. And in my case right now, it's the attic and we can kind of watch it as it go, goes along here. Now my attic includes both my furnace slash air conditioning uh, fan, the big fan that sits up there in addition to some electrical equipment, some computers and radios and stuff that I have running up there. So when I say attic, in this case, it's all of that stuff up there. And you can look at it on a minute by minute basis. You can definitely tell here from this image or this graph uh, when the, the big fan is running for the air conditioning distribution system because I had it turned off and then I turned it on a few minutes ago. Uh, and then you can kind of watch it on an hourly basis. But you can go through all of these devices and you can look at uh, if you look at home, you're looking at the overall usage for the entire house. And again, actually, I think I need to look on, there we go, total usage. And then I can graph it. And you can look at total usage for the day for your entire uh, load center. And that's coming from the two main clamps that are in the, in the mains coming into the house. Uh, and you can look through all of this stuff here. It's a really neat app. Uh, there's a bunch of options you can set up here. Uh, they do sell thermostats, smart plugs, and uh, I guess EV chargers, or at least you can connect to some of those. I don't use any of that stuff because I have all of my uh, Sunoff and uh, Tasmoda stuff. I don't need their smart plugs, uh, but you can get that in there as well. And then here's a circuit graph if you want to look at it that way. Uh, and then you can set up notifications for various things approaching uh, your monthly peak. Uh, this is interesting. Uh, if you have a oven, you can notify yourself that you left it on. Unusual consumption, energy saving opportunities, home mechanical issue. Um, so there's a bunch of stuff on here that you can set up for that. I, you, I may want to know when my Emporia is offline. That one I will set up. So I assume that comes in the application. Uh, you can export your raw data to CSV uh, and other stuff. Now they do have a web link and I talked to them on chat yesterday. And when I talked to him on chat yesterday, I asked them uh, if I could share, it's a beta test link and you can log into their web portal on their beta test site and they want feedback. So you would do, you would send an email to support an Emporia, uh, what I'll, I'll, I'll link this all down below, but they said it was okay to submit or to send the link out so they can get feedback on their portal. And then they will release that as a production portal at some point. The caveat to that, and this, this is preventing me from doing it right now, is that the portal, in, the, the beta portal is not, um, is not SSL secure. So you're sending your Emporia credentials over the open internet. That's a problem. They said, yes, we know that because it's a beta. Well, it doesn't matter if it's a beta or not you have to secure your credentials. So although I'll link that down there, I caution you probably not to use it until they actually get it up and running, uh, unless you wanna try it out, and then you'll have to go in there and change your Emporia credentials right after you use it. Otherwise, you're gonna you have a potential to, have, um, to be hacked or whatever else. All right, so back on the, uh, back on the, the, um, the app, it's, it's just, it's pretty basic, right? You have a management section, so you can use uh, time of use management. You can set things for your smart plugs and your EV chargers. Uh, you can adjust them based on your rate throughout the, throughout the day. 
Um, of course, you have PC, uh, you have man, uh, peak demand device management, uh, optimize excess energy. Uh, and you had some of this stuff requires uh, some additional devices like the smart plugs and whatnot to use. But one of the things they do is if you set your location, it can try to get your rate. Now, I haven't played with that too much. Uh, there's a notifications tab for all your notifications. I haven't tried to do that yet um, to see if that really does work. Um, so right now I'm just going by basically kilowatt hours or watt hours, uh, kilowatts usage. And you can see it as it as it circulates here on a second by second basis. Um, when you do set this up, by the way, you need to make sure that you're close to the um, that you're close to the device that uses Bluetooth for initial connection to, to do the configuration. So make sure you're doing that. Um, and other than that, it was super simple to set up. It's 2.4 gig only. Uh, so you'll need to make sure that you're using a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi access point. Most of us have the dual band, so that's probably not an issue for you. Uh, and that's about it. So let's let this populate. Uh, we'll let this populate in the energy portal here, and then we'll come back in a little bit and see if we get some more data here. And once we do that, I'm, what I'm also going to do is show you a little bit of stuff in Grafana uh, to to plot this in Grafana in addition to just using the energy portal here because I want to see stuff over time. If you've watched any of my other videos, you've seen my Grafana stuff uh, where I like to watch stuff uh, there. It's a it's right now a better interface for me to be able to track in, in over time, right? So uh, we'll come back in a little bit whenever this is uh, populated and see what it looks like. Okay, so I've given it some time and it's populated the new devices into my energy portal here. Again, remember it takes up to two hours once you add something for it to start showing up. So you'll notice right away here that I have uh, a stacked block or a stacked bar here. And it's comprised of both my Home Energy Meter G2 and the new Emporia device that I have. Now this could be problematic because I'm adding the value of two different devices that are measuring the same data. And what I mean by that is this device here measures all of my incoming uh, power usage to the house on the 220 legs that, that also feed the washer, the dryer, no, the dryer, uh, the air conditioner and the oven slash stove. Those are all 220 devices. In order to get um, readings on those, I had to put the meter outside in that box. This is the meter I've been running for a very long time that you've seen in some of my other videos. The new Emporia meter is measuring the 110 legs that are on the garage um, panel and they don't include the air conditioner, the dryer or the oven slash stove because those are all 220 that get fed direct, directly from the outside box. So what I'm essentially doing here is measuring all the 220 stuff plus the 110 stuff and then adding them together. Ultimately, that's probably not the best idea. So in this case, I don't really need this uh, to be monitored. I only need the main outside panel to be monitored for my overall power usage of the house. This is nice to see, and I can maybe make a sensor or template or something that then does some math here to see the differences, to know how much is running on those three big ticket items versus what's running just on the internal stuff. All right, so in addition to that, we now see all of our devices coming in from the individual clamps, individual circuits. And as you look along here, these any of these with the 1D, the one day resolution are listed. Those are the ones I just added a little bit ago that you watched me do. And we can see now, they're sorted in order of uh, in order of consumption. So the disposal or the refrigerator, those are on the same circuit. Uh, the disposal is a little thing in the sink that chops up the, the food or whatever and puts it down the drain. Uh, but anyway, that fridge is running the most with uh, the attic as being second. And again, the attic's got the big air conditioning slash heater fan in there that runs all the time or runs whenever the air conditioner's on. So that will consume more. And on, we go down here. Some of these haven't had any consumption at all yet, so there's nothing to report. So there it is in the energy portal. You'll start seeing all of these show up from the view over to the energy portal. And you have a way to start measuring your household consumption on a per circuit basis. So that gives you an indication of this type of display. And you can, you can bring it up by week or month or whatever. 
So I like to graph things in Grafana and I like to do things um, a little bit nicer there or they look a little bit nicer to me. So I'm gonna run over and let's do a little quick Grafana graph of some of these values. I already have a power uh, dashboard that I've set up. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this to the power dashboard. Now I've got some videos on how I built some of these other dashboards. So go ahead and check those out if you haven't seen them. But I'm gonna add a new panel and it'll be an empty panel. I'm just gonna call it Emporia View as the title of the panel. And it's gonna be a time series. And I'm gonna start looking for um, kilowatt hour type devices. So we'll select kilowatt hour and it shows me everything, which I don't want. And I'm gonna choose an entity ID and the tag value is gonna be the actual entity ID. And we'll just start with the first one here. So we have attic one day. And because we're taking uh, a picture every minute here, you'll see a pretty granular view of usage here. And let me pick um, another one. So we'll go down here and add a query. Same thing, we're gonna select kilowatt hours as a measurement. Entity ID, let's do the fridge, disposal fridge one day. And now you have two values here and you can start playing around with stuff over here on the right hand side where you can set legends. So you have kilowatt hour mean. So we wanna name these, right? So this is gonna be the attic. And the second one is going to be the uh, fridge disposal. And you'll see these show up on the actual graph. So now we have attic and fridge disposal and you can see the different uh, values here. We can, we can change to bars uh, lines, we can do smoothing. Uh, so there's a lot of different options here because this has only been running a couple hours. I'm going to expand it out a little bit more there so we can see more of what it is. And then the points, if we want to choose the size of the points, I can make those a little bit smaller. And then I always want to have a connected line and you can see the usage here as we go along. A lot of options you can set to make this look just how you want it. Um, again, there's bars versus uh, lines. And then you can do stacked if you want to do stacked. to Kind of give you overall for everything and give you a picture. It's kind of like what you're looking at on the energy portal, only in a kind of a different format. So again, you can start messing around and setting all of these things however you want to set them. And just kind of look at your values over time. So there you go with the energy portal. We've we've installed it. We've talked about getting it into the energy portal. We've talked about using Grafana here to show it. It's a neat tool uh, that you can use. And again, you've got notifications you can get directly from Emporia. You can set up notifications in Home Assistant if you want to. There's a lot of stuff you can do with energy monitoring to kind of keep an idea of your energy usage and kind of turn things off. We know we've heard of the phantom devices chargers and things that sit there all the time. If you have a circuit that should have no activity on it and you're seeing it, check for those phantom chargers. Check to see how much those cable boxes or those you know, streaming devices are, are taking when they're just sitting there doing nothing. Um, so I hope this is informational to you, um, shows you a little bit about the Emporia device. By the way, I bought the thing. It was not sent to me as any kind of uh, promotion or anything like that. I just wanted to have more granular look at each one of my circuits. So I didn't have to have a smart plug on every single device in the house and kind of get an idea of my usage. If you have any questions or comments, put those down below. Hit me up on Discord. If you're not a channel member, I'd love for you to join if you would like to. And we will see you on the next video.